Hello dear chess lovers and friends, today I just want to give you a solid defense that you can use against the London system. This video is going to be full of traps as always, but first let's start with what I have already talked about in the video that has popped up in the card above. So after pawn to d4 and d5, I told you that whenever you see bishop a4, which is the accelerated London system, go pawn to h5. Still pawn to e3 is by far the top played move, which is a blunder by the way, and one that is very hard to see. But in case you didn't watch that video where I covered this line, the whole idea is just to go pawn to e5. It doesn't matter whether white takes with a bishop or a pawn. For example, bishop takes e5, then we start hunting this bishop till death. I also showed you what happens after let's say pawn takes e5 instead of bishop takes e5. Again you just begin chasing this bishop until it gets trapped. Unfortunately most people seem to know this trap in 2023 which is why I suggest that instead of playing pawn to h5 and pawn to d5 maybe try to start this in a way of playing the Indians defense. Putting a pawn on d5 is not part of our plans in the system that I'm about to recommend to you guys. So they play bishop a4 the London system anyways or well, still the Indian defense you go pawn to c5 immediately challenging the center now white could play pawn to d5 here just advancing his pawn but most london players aren't happy with advancing so early so you're not going to see pawn to d5 in fact in the latest database it's like the third most played move they usually play pawn to e3 or pawn to c3 in this position so don't worry about pawn to d5 we'll cover it in another video so pawn to e3 that's what london players play they don't want to get into the lines of you know the benoni like structures anyways so after pawn to e3 or pawn to c3 the next move that you need to think about immediately is knight d5 so hold it right here this is our key move always remember this the only thing you need to picture is that we haven't moved any of these pieces at the back rank Yep, except for the king, we don't have to move it. To make it simple for you guys, just remember to break one of the opening principles that says don't move the same piece twice in the opening stage. In 2023, we are breaking the rules. So knight d5 is the main key move. We are just threatening to take the bishop and double up white pawns along the f file. Simple. Once we take white stack squad bishop, we are going to play this in the King's Indian defense style or the perk defense style, which you already know, you guys, d6, g6, bishop, g7, and castle short. Then we continue playing chess. If d takes c5, we always have queen a5 check and win back this pawn. So that's what we're going to be doing against the London system. So this is our key move. But if bishop g3, which you are going to see most of the times, you now go queen b6. Now, this is our real point, guys. The big downside of the London system is that by developing the bishop so early, white leaves the queen side undefended okay we are threatening to capture the b2 pawn right now and it's not obvious how to defend it therefore this is the position that we are going to be looking at in this video we'll see what to do if white responds with knight to c3 or pawn to b3 or queen c1 or even knight a3 and lastly pawn to c4 those are the only sensible moves they can play here so let's begin with knight to c3 I don't know maybe intending to exchange knights plus our knight is not defended so the best we can do here is just to simply take on c3 so that if white takes well we can leave the tension just like this on the center and start forming our perk pawn structure or the kid pawn structure that's all you need to keep in mind so go pawn to g6 here intending to fianchero your bishop white's doubled pawns along the c file are a long-term weakness okay so don't worry about this. If bishop d5 here, you have pawn to f6 and then you continue with your plan, castle short. So they are going to play something like knight f3, which is the top played move. You go bishop g7, bishop e2, you castle short. And whenever you see pawn to h4, just go pawn to h5. You lock up this side of the board. Rook b1 attacking your queen. Don't make a mistake of playing queen c7. There's a bishop which is covering the c7 square. So go queen a5. That's where our queen belongs in case of rook b1 so we are attacking two pawns here and white is under pressure here not to mention that we are also pressurizing the d4 pawn so this will be an easy game for you guys later on pawn to d6 will come knight c6 i mean let's look at something else so instead of knight to c3 what if white plays queen c1 defending his b2 pawn i mean since we were attacking it on the previous move well now you see another reason why we put our queen on b6 
to put more pressure on the d4 square. So this move drops the d pawn. So c takes d4, e takes d4. And now we take this pawn for free. So one thing that you need to know in the plan that I'm showing you guys is that in most cases you're going to be a pawn up right in the opening stage, which is a good thing to happen. So if knight to f3 attacking our queen, we simply play queen c5. White does have some compensation for the pawn quite all right. I mean, in the form of quick development, but with two center pawns, I would rather choose to be black here. The game may continue as follows. Bishop d3, once the dust settles, that's when you now start forming your perk defense position or your kid position, you know, bishop g7. If pawn to c3 covering the b2 square, you go pawn to d6. You are simply playing the open perk here with white having a bad bishop on g3. E.g. rook e1, you just cast a short. Knight bd2 developing a minor piece, maybe wanting to put the knight on b3 attacking the queen. So we go queen c7, we don't want knight b3 to meet us. So knight e4 instead anyways, we go knight d7. In the near future, we are going to play pawn to e5. If c4 attacking our knight, we go knight 5 f6. The plan is still to go pawn to e5 later on, like what we do in the rat defense, which I covered in the video that has popped up in the card above, you need to watch that. You are missing. If pawn to c5, hoping that if you take, they are going to take your queen. Plus, there are some possible discoveries here. Well, you first of all deal with the shepherd and all the ships will begin scampering down in all directions. Anyways, here we are just up by two pawns and we should be winning this game. Okay, so that was in the queen c1 line. Let's look at something else. All right. Again, back to our starting position, d4, knight f6, bishop f4, then we play pawn to c5, and white plays pawn to e3, which is the position that we are looking at here. What did I say? Don't go queen b6. I'll show you why this is bad. So in this position, before developing another piece, I said, always think of breaking the rule that says, don't move the same piece twice in the opening stage. We simply want to take the bishop. So bishop g3, and then that's when we play queen b6 attacking the pawn on b2 and so far we have looked at what happens after knight c3 and queen c1 but what if white plays pawn to b3 come on you guys let's support each other hit that like button there to encourage me to keep on making more wonderful content just like this one and if at all you haven't already subscribed to this channel do so if you want to see more and more wonderful content. Come on, you can do that in four seconds, you guys. That shouldn't be hard, I mean. Anyways, so after pawn to b3, instead of knight c3 or queen c1, well, just know that this is the most common move. It's not a mistake, but it does have the downside of weakening the dark squares on the queen side, these highlighted squares. So when you see pawn to b3, just take on d4, begin simplifying the game, kiss. So c takes d4 by white, and then what did I say? What are you supposed to do when the dust settles? I mean, when there's nothing going on on this side of the board, NGO, nothing going on. You immediately start forming the perk defense pawn structure, beginning with pawn to g6. At worst, you will go bishop g7, cast short, and start developing naturally. In most cases, you'll be developing your queen's knight to d7. If c5, the knight can always come back to f6. But, well, instead of pawn to b3, what if white plays knight a3? Well, this move looks passive, but there's some logic to it. The knight has some good jumps from here. They want to play knight c4 next. So, queen takes b2 looks natural, but it may lead to an uncomfortable position. This is actually playable, by the way, but we are not just prepared for this. It's not part of our plan. Yeah, we can go queen b4 check and rescue our queen somehow. Our knight is doing a great job of stopping knight c7 check, which would win our rook on a8. But this is just to risky, you guys. It's not what we want. So instead of taking on b2, you simply go queen b4 check. White has to give up his right to castle. Otherwise, if pawn to c3, we take the pawn. If they take, we are going to take the knight. And so they have to play queen d2 again. That's when we play knight e4, attacking the queen. And after queen takes, pawn takes, we are attacking the knight. So the knight has to go to b5, maybe trying to check us on c7. We simply go knight a6. 
From here, when the dust settles, we'll play g6, bishop g7 cast short, d6, and our light squared bishop will sit on d7, attacking the knight. I mean, we are just having a good game from here. So just to emphasize on one point here, in most of these lines that I'm showing you, especially if you see an early knight c3 or knight a3, just know that knight b5 is a possibility because of this dark squared bishop which is here, okay? So always look out for this. You may lose a lot of games if you are not aware of this. Knight b5 is the most common idea. They always play knight c7, forking the king on e8 and the rook on a8. So be very careful in this line. Forget about pawn to a6. Just go queen b4 check. That's all. Anyways, so let's look at the last line where white plays d4. And instead of d5, we go knight f6, the Indian defense. Bishop a4, the London system. By the way, this is not even yet the London system. It's still the Indian defense because it's unclear what white wants to do. So we go pawn to c5 anyways, and then pawn to e3. Then what do we do? Queen b6? No. We move the same piece twice before developing any other piece. Hitting on the bishop. So bishop g3, and then we go queen b6. Now this time, instead of Knight c3, queen c1, b3, or knight a3, white may play pawn to c4, counter-attacking our knight. This is actually a good move, but it wouldn't be most people's first thought, so it's quite rare. Don't even worry about this, just go knight back to f6. Look, yes, queen takes b2 is still playable, but somehow dubious and unclear. Let me show you one disadvantage of this move. I'm not saying it's not playable, it's still playable, but once white plays c takes d5 and queen takes a1 you are going to play the rest of your opening and part of the middle game without the queen being involved this queen is nearly trapped it just takes three moves for white to win this queen okay knight f3 knight d2 and knight b3 and your black queen is dead so you need to be very careful for example knight a6 may be played here maybe you are planning to go knight b4 but Bishop takes a6 solves everything. And let's say if b takes a6, now white plays knight f3, planning to castle short, and maybe someday they'll go knight d2. If you play a passive move and put their knight on b3, let's say d6 right here, they'll just go knight d2. And there's nothing you can do to stop knight b3. I mean, if pawn to c4, we'll just take this pawn anyways and cast a shot. The best you can do is to play rook b8, but still knight b3 comes and you are expected to give up a rook. Now material is like eco, but still your queen is still trapped. This is still playable, but just so unclear what you are doing right now. You can't even play your perk normally. So just avoid taking on b2 in most cases, unless if you have a clear way of bringing back your queen otherwise just avoid it instead of queen takes b2 after pawn to c4 attacking your knight just go knight f6 still attacking the b2 pawn anyway so they have to play something like queen d2 i guess or b3 i don't know but if they play knight c3 a tricky move again planning to play knight b5 this is when you can take on b2 that's okay now because now you are attacking this knight this time if knight b5, this is a mistake by white. Why? We always have knight a6 for status, but we can go queen b4 check and in between move. If queen d2, we take away white's right to castle, king takes, and then we go knight e4 check and grab that bishop, the dark squad bishop plus attacking the poor rook on h1. So they have to take this knight and then we go knight a6. In this end game, white doesn't really have any compensation for the pawn. So that's why I told you that in most of these lines, we are always going to be a pawn up. Okay, so before I end this video, let me just show you what not to play in the opening. So after pawn to d4, you go knight f6, and then bishop a4, you play c5, pawn to e3. Don't play queen b6 before playing knight d5. That's the rule here. If you play queen b6 right away, thinking you are attacking the b2 pawn, well, white can now play knight c3 here. This is a good move. A very common idea in the London system. The idea is that if you take this poisoned pawn somehow, then white plays knight b5. Our queen is sort of trapped and white is threatening a knight fork on c7. The computer says even this is playable, but it doesn't look like much fun. 
And look, at human level, chances of making blunders here are very high because you'll be thinking of the c7 pawn and in some way you may end up hanging your queen. Yeah, quite alright you can go queen b4 check and still find a way of getting out but knight c7 still comes and your rook on h8 to 4. Even if you don't play queen b4 check first, let's say you play knight d5 here. White can play rook b1, start buying some time on your queen. Yes, this is still playable but this line is just drawish and you don't want to be playing like this. Look at all these threats. Where are you going to take your knight? Yeah, you can give a check first and maybe try to do this. You win the bishop. This is still playable, but you didn't intend to play this while being down an exchange. Anyways, so just avoid playing queen b6 before playing knight d5. That's the secret for our defense. You guys, I'm out. Thanks and wish you all the best in your games.